Well, I mean, that's, that's the point. I mean, the point is not that, uh, I mean, as you were talking about before, the fact that you now supposedly are over the racism of the earlier period and therefore can forget those other things because they're no longer important to the tradition of being Norwegian, let's say, okay. But uh, that very act is a repetition of the superiority which was shown in the earlier case when it came to race and now is how good we are as, as Norwegians. I mean, it's, a, it's a, a really, really nice way of demonstrating that, that the structure is what's wrong, the structure of thinking which produces the superior Norwegians for whatever reason to the others, right? And, um, and yet, I mean, one thing that is, uh, is maybe a difference or maybe something that uh, still remains or maybe a way that it has to be reinscribed is the fact that at the time of this human zoo, this supposedly, I mean, now in other words, uh, you can be, you don't have to be in a cage to be in Norway, but real equality for people who are foreigners, not just for one generation, but they still remain foreign, maybe the second or third generation, even if they were born in Sweden, whatever. I mean, that's still there. So there's a way that that vestige, that trace of the past still exists. But what doesn't change is this structure of superiority. Because what happens now is all of these people, of course, are allowed to be Norwegian citizens, but they aren't truly equal. So this, so this way of being good is also a way of reinscribing a kind of racial or cultural difference. And I mean, we were discussing culture earlier, and I mean, I'm, I'm very suspect of celebrations of culture. I, I know what you're talking about in, Mas uh, in uh, uh, Norway because I was there, and I this sense of being good terribly strong. It must be religiously based in some ways, but it's very useful nationally for a certain ideology, which produces a sense of homogeneity, um, which becomes in a certain way tyrannical, right? It becomes tyrannical because who is, you know, who can say they're good, right? And who wants to then speak for evil? I mean, you know, you, you seem uh, to be perverse to do so. But so the official definition, the official definition of culture is what I'm against, and that's what is being inscribed. Anytime you say, we Norwegians, or we Germans, this is who we are, this is our authentic identity, whatever, um, I, I think that's a big problem. I, I find it stronger in Europe than elsewhere, um, and maybe strongest in Scandinavian countries, I don't think so. I think it's very strong in Germany, I think it's very strong in France, you know. Uh, yet it was someone in Norway who said to me, what I referred to in my talk, who said, you know, the fascinating thing for us in Obama's victory is not we have suddenly, we have in the long haul through history managed to overcome a lot of racism in the United States, but just look at that, almost like a human zoo. The United States is so strange, it allows a, a black to be president, that would never happen. They were, they were ad admiring it, but realizing it would never happen. In a Scandinavian country, it would never happen in Europe that you would have someone with different skin, much less with a middle name Hussein, to be president. Now, of course, there's the other side of this because we can make a great virtue in the United States of being so inclusive, so inclusive, and that can be another kind of, well, it can be more imperialism than maybe uh, Norway is guilty of. But I think you have uh, an excellent point to make to, to complain about this, A, forgetting, uh, which you want to bring back into people's consciousness in a way that then challenges the present uh, structure of superiority that is uh, widely accepted as accurate, as a true reflection of reality. I think you're absolutely right.